Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining us from around the world. My name is Krista Ellis. I'm with the Parkinson's Foundation. And I want to formally welcome you, if you're new to this community, to the Parkinson's Foundation's Mindfulness Monday. I am based in Western North Carolina, so let us know in the chat where you're joining in from us with us today. As I mentioned, you'll need to grab a pen and paper. We're gonna be doing some journaling today. So get that ready for yourself, or you can open up the, the notes app on your smartphone, your tablet, a Word document on your computer, however you're joining us. If you're new here, just know that you will be muted for the duration of the session. We like to communicate over the chat. So uh, you'll see people are already writing in. So feel free to share your questions, thoughts, feelings, concerns, whatever strikes you today, feel free to share it in the chat. And we also see that a lot of us join on video. So if you're comfortable with it and have the capability to, I do encourage you to join us on video. If you're joining by phone or just have your video off for today, just know that that's okay too. Our next live English session will be with yours truly next week on August 15th. Here's a rundown of upcoming events for our PD Health at Home community. So again, next Monday with me, with me Healing Our Wounds and Pain. This Wellness Wednesday, we're gonna be singing with Parkinson's part two, Wellness Wednesday, Wednesday, August 3rd. And Fitness Friday, every Friday, we release a new fitness video on our YouTube channel. The next live Fitness Friday will be on August 19th, featuring physical optimization, functional fitness for PD. If you wanna stay connected with PD Health at Home, please note that there was a recent update to Zoom. If you usually join online using that Zoom application installed on your computer, phone, or tablet, just ensure that you have the most updated version uh, so that you don't miss Wellness Wednesday or Fitness Friday this week. For more info, you can find out um, at the Zoom webpage at zoom.us, zoom.us, and you'll find some information there. All right, here's a really, really new update if you've been here for long enough. So this one is brand new for all of us joining us. Uh, this year, we are hosting first time ever regional care partner summit. So every other year we were hosting care partner summit uh, from people all around the country joining us. So here we are doing live in person and online regional care partner summits. The one that I'll be at, if you want to come and see me in person, is in Atlanta, Georgia on November 5th, um, Great Plains on October 29th, the Midwest region, November 5th, Northeast region, October 29th, and in the West region, November 5th. So the corresponding websites are next to um, what's listed there, and I believe my colleague Danielle is posting the links in the chat for you guys to to click on. So regional care partner summits, and I'll be in person in Atlanta, Georgia and offering a mindfulness session. So please do join me if you can make it there. I wanna give thanks to our sponsor, the Light of Day Foundation. Their generosity makes our programs possible. So many thanks to the Light of Day Foundation for their support. If you're new to the Parkinson's journey, please do not hesitate to reach out, find resources, answer your questions by visiting our webpage at parkinson.org or calling our helpline at 1-800-4PD-INFO or emailing helpline at parkinson.org. Today, we're welcoming back the wonderful Jacqueline Fitch. She is a registered yoga teacher of 500 hours, specializes in energy medicine yoga, and teaches uh, yoga classes at the Retreat Center of Maryland, who is also a Parkinson's Foundation Community Grant recipient. So please check her out. Let me know if you're in the area. We can connect you with her to join some of her yoga classes online. Without further ado, I am going to pass it over to our facilitator, our expert for today's session, Ms. Jacqueline Fitch. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Krista. So great to see everyone. I love that you put in the chat where you're from. I even think somebody was from England. So we have an international group today, which is great. So today's topic, transforming worry into self-love and self-compassion. So let's talk about worry a little bit. Constant worrying can take a toll, not only on our physical health, but it can zap our emotional strength and resiliency as well. But it is indeed a natural and familiar response as we manage life's challenges, especially around our health. 
And of course, this emotion of worry also runs super high as a caregiver. But some of us just tend towards being a worry wart all the time. I often get asked, what is the difference between worry, fear, and anxiety? Because they can seem similar and are used, those that terminology um, can be used interchangeably. So we talked about anxiety last time. I think of anxiety as being more unfocused. It can actually arise as a result of us trying to suppress our emotions. It's more of an internal feeling of unease in the body or nervousness, um, apprehension that may produce physical symptoms such as a rapid heartbeat, for example. And in a broader sense, we consider worry to be more external. We're always worried about others, worried about friends, worried about family members. And it's often described or more closely related with fear as an extension of fear. It's a natural response to anticipated future problems. We can be chronic worry, worriers, worrying for or, or about others, worrying that something bad might happen, feeling like we're not in control. But worry is our attempt to feel useful. We think that's gonna help the situation when in reality it does not. And it makes us think that we're in control when we're not, but it does nothing to help promote a positive outcome. But remember, as I always say, our emotions are indeed informative, they're instructive, they can be a source of wisdom and strength, and we acknowledge them so we can act, so we can take action rather than react. An easy reference is to think of the ABCs of our emotions. We want to, number one, A, A stands for acknowledge. We want to acknowledge and honor what we are feeling that times of worry, stress, and pain are experienced by everyone and that no one is exempt. B, B stands for be with the emotion. Let your emotions be your teacher. Try to identify the emotion when it arises, notice where you feel it physically in the body and know that it can be different for everyone. So there is no right or wrong, so to speak. In our ABCs, the C stands for care care for the emotion, knowing how to regulate difficult emotions is one of the most powerful skills you can learn for your wellness and giving ourselves time and space to feel the emotion and actually feeling it actually helps us dissipate that feeling more easily. And listen and ask yourself in the moment, what is it that you need? Caring for our emotions begins with self-compassion and self-love. And this, these are the practices that we're gonna talk about today. I'll talk about that they're proven to relieve the intensity of all of our challenging emotions. Um, self-compassion and self-love build resiliency and they improve our physical and mental health. Self-love is the foundation of all healing, meaning thriving in your life and thankfully can be learned and enhanced through movement, mindfulness, and meditation. Okay, so if you have paper and pen handy, I invite you to write these questions down to reflect on them after our call or later today when you can find a quiet moment. So we won't take the time needed to devote to them now because I don't want you to feel rushed but I want you to write these down and I think Chris is gonna put them in the chat for me maybe. First journal prompt, what is my biggest worry? I want you to acknowledge it and name it. Again, you don't have to name it right now, write it down. Number two, how does it show up in your body physically? Is it a headache? Do you feel a tightness in the chest? Do you feel your breathing get a little shallow? Again, it can be different for everyone, no wrong answer, but I want you to stop and pause and notice how it shows up for you. Can you name one act of kindness that you've already done for yourself this morning? For example, you made yourself a cup of coffee with that amazing coffee that you bought in Costa Rica while you were on vacation. 
that you normally save for special occasions, but you treated yourself today and you put it in your favorite mug and you added your favorite cream and you went outside and you spent some time in the morning sunshine to slowly sip that cup of coffee. That's an act of kindness towards yourself. Last journal prop. I want you to list the top three things of many that you absolutely love about yourself. For example, it could be your smile, it could be your sense of humor, it could be the fact that you're a whiz at crossword puzzles, it could be anything. Three things. Hopefully it's super easy for you. Okay, self-care translates to self-love. So first of all, kudos to you for showing up today. This is indeed an act of self-care to be here on Mondays with Krista and Danielle. So the first commitment we need to make every day is to ourselves. Commit to a practice of any kind, even if it's just five minutes a day. Make yourself primary. This is not being selfish. When we nourish and take care of ourselves, we have more energy and capacity to show up for others. You've heard that quote, you can't pour from an empty cup. So think about how you nourish yourself. Yes, it starts with the fresh and healthy food that we eat, but it extends from there into everything you provide for, that you provide for yourself in life, including how to speak to yourself. So I want you to begin to notice that, to notice that inner voice. Listen to how you talk about yourself to others. Do you criticize or compliment yourself? Someone says, oh, I love your curly hair. <laughs> <laughs> and you're applied, oh my God, it looks terrible today. It's so frizzy versus just saying, why, thank you. So that's a practice that we, that we all can benefit from. Also, I want to share, and I sent the link to Krista, but there's this video that has been circulating for quite a, quite a while now that has this dad that stands his little daughter, she's maybe four years old, in front of the mirror and practices a daily pep talk with her. He says that he does it every morning. It is adorable. And he has a repeat after him and, say, and says things like, I am strong. I work hard. I am beautiful. I am amazing. <laughs> and the list goes on. It is so super cute. It's a great listen to all of us, a great lesson to all of us. So um, if Krista has the link, she can share it. And it's just a feel good video. So I encourage you to watch it. Also, mindfulness can help us to relearn as adults to take pleasure in basic everyday things that we used to enjoy spontaneously as children. It can take many different forms. So think back to what you love to do as a child. Um, for me, I can just remember roller skating up and down the sidewalk in my front yard. Um, you know, now it's on rollerblades. I love to go rollerblading. Um, walk barefoot more. The human foot is an amazing example of natural engineering at its finest. It's flexible, adaptable, but we stuff them into these ill-fitting shoes that disconnect us from the healing energy of the earth. So get your bare feet on the earth with that cup of coffee in the morning. This summer, fill up a kiddie pool in your backyard and sit in it, sit in it or put your feet in it. Um, we do that, my husband and I. Paint or draw. My sister-in-law just ordered a paint by number set. Go to a park for a concert. Watch a kid's baseball game. You don't even need to know the kids. Sing out loud. Turn up the radio. Dance. Spend time journaling. Sit down and handwrite a note to a friend and mail it. Put it in the mail versus sending an email. Take one of the many, many classes sponsored by the Parkinson's Foundation. Move your body, practice yoga. It's not about touching your toes, I promise you. It's accessible to everyone. It helps us get back in touch with our bodies and it helps to squelch that inner critic and boost feelings of self-love. And find people with like-minded passions. So we need to surround ourselves with people who understand and accept us so we can be supported when times get tough. So find a group to be a part of or just pick up the phone and reach out to one person, maybe someone you haven't talked to in years. These are all practices in self-love and self-compassion. 
I want to say on the flip side too, maybe you need to cry. Maybe you just need a good cry. It can be super cathartic. Or maybe you practice five minutes of mindful breathing. This also translates to self-care. So science tells us that the molecules of emotions, which are called neuropeptides, change, they actually change the chemistry and the electricity of every cell in our body and mind. So it's important that we embrace the practice of gratitude. I can't say enough about that. Gratitude, self-love, self-compassion to negate the worry and to calm our nervous system. For I want you to remember that you are the medicine. All right, talking about move your body, moving your body and breath work, let's do some practices, some tools that you can take away from today's session that will help you. So we want to study the breath. We wanna breathe deeply to activate the diaphragm. When we breathe shallow and we're just breathing into the upper part of our chest, um, that does not help our nervous system. We wanna take deep breath. Breath. So today we're going to inhale through the nose and on the exhale, we're going to exhale out the mouth, but as if you were trying to fog up a mirror or as if you were going to clean your eyeglasses. So it's going to be that slight constriction at the back of the throat. So it'll sound like this. Like a whisper. So I want you to interlace your thumbs at the webbing and place them on your low belly. In fact, your thumbs could be at your navel and then your four fingers could be touching down towards the base of your body. So this will help you sense your deep breathing when you activate the diaphragm. So take a nice comfortable seat, become aware of your feet on the floor. Lengthen your spine as the crown of the head reaches up towards the sky. Soften the shoulders away from the ears. And just drop into the physical body. Again, eyes can be open or closed. Gaze can be soft. And I invite you to breathe in deep and exhale long. Breathe in peace and exhale peace. Breathe in love and exhale gratitude. Breathe in self-compassion and breathe out compassion for all. And just take two more breaths at your own pace. In through the nose. Exhale with that whisper. All right. Our next move is called palming the eyes. This is extremely healing for the nervous system. So I invite you to rub your hands vigorously together to generate some heat. And you're gonna mindfully place the heels of your hands on those high, beautiful cheekbones. And if it helps, you can rest your elbows on your desk or your counter or wherever you are. You are, you are. Or you can stay sitting upright. Eyes can be open or closed. Thumbs are lightly resting on the temples and the fingers are draped into the hairline. And continue with that same breath. And know that you're holding specific points on the head that are keeping the blood in your forebrain, connecting the circulatory system with the nervous system, and also the meridian pathways in ancient Chinese medicine. So this hold is extremely beneficial for that emotion of worry. So breathe in deeply and exhale all that worry out through the mouth. 
Again, inhale deeply and exhale long. And take your fingertips to cover the eyelids. Inhale and on the exhale, lightly draw your fingertips across the eyelids to the temples and then give the temples a little massage here. Lovingly trace behind the ears, slide the hands down the sides of the neck, give the tops of the shoulders a squeeze. Give yourself a little shoulder massage. This definitely equates to self-love here. And then draw the hands over the heart center. Again, breathing in deeply. And exhale, sigh it out. Again, breathe in deep. And exhale long. Bring your hands once more to cover the eyes. Inhale, and on the exhale, smooth your hands over the top of the head, down the neck. Squeeze the tops of the shoulders again, and then bring your hands to the side body, just on the side of your rib cage here. And then you're gonna smooth your hands down the outsides of your legs. Bend forward if you can and sweep the hands off the toes. If you can't reach your toes, just visualize it. Then bring your hands to cover the big toenail and then draw the hands up the inside of the feet, up the inside of the legs, right up the center line of the body. And then take one hand to the inside of one arm and just smooth it down and off the palm. Turn the hand around and then smooth it up the back side of the arm. And then same thing, opposite side. This is a beautiful act of self-love. Calming the nervous system. Hands go back over the heart center. Breathe in deep. And exhale long. And take one hand to the heart center and just begin to circle your heart. This is one of my favorite techniques. It allows us to drop from our busy, busy mind into the physical body, into our heart center, that place of love. And come into the fullness of your strength, your courage, your self-compassion, self-awareness, and your wholeheartedness, living from a place of worthiness. And I invite you, as you continue to circle the heart, to mentally say to yourself, I love myself deeply and accept myself completely. And notice how that feels in your body. Notice if that's hard for you to say or think about. Again, I love myself deeply and accept myself completely. Breathe in through the nose and sigh it out. Next, I invite you to bring your fingertips to the orbital bone, right underneath the iris of the eye if you were looking straight ahead. So if you see an acupuncturist or you know anything about ancient Chinese medicine, these are points on the stomach meridian. And the stomach is how we nourish ourselves. But lightly tapping on these points or tapping even with a little bit of vigor or even tapping off the body an inch or two, tapping in the field, these points are very grounding to the body. So as you tap, breathe in through the nose and exhale, sigh it out. These are beautiful standalone techniques to help you ground your energy and ground you in your physical body. All right, the next thing I want you to do is to give yourself a big tight hug. So you're gonna bring one hand to the side of the rib cage, just right there in the middle, and the other hand to the other side of the rib cage. These are acupressure points as well, but just know that you're giving yourself a big hug and you can even gently rock your body back and forth from side to side. Breathing in through the nose 
and sighing out through the mouth. So these points in ancient medicine are points on the energy pathway of our spleen. And our spleen is in charge of transporting and moving nutrients throughout the body. It also helps the stomach, that nourishment that we take in for ourselves, it helps the stomach transform that food into energy and nutrients. And when our spleen is strong and functioning well, our thoughts are clear and settled. Breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. But most importantly, just know that you're giving yourself this attention, this love, this self-care by just giving yourself a hug. Most importantly, it calms the nervous system. Okay. Another technique, which is one of my favorites, it's called the nine hearts. And we're literally gonna draw nine hearts. So we're gonna start on the circumference of our face. So bringing your fingertips to the bridge of the nose, Inhale and on the exhale, you're just gonna lovingly trace this heart shape around the face twice more. So this promotes the feelings of joy and love in your body. Next, we're gonna trace a heart on our torso. So just bring your hands to the base of your body, trace up the center line of the body, and around the body back to the base three times. Now we're gonna draw three big hearts in our field and just imagine yourself being in the center of that heart. So just in the air, trace this big, beautiful heart to hold you. Breathing in through the nose, and out through the mouth. Take a comfortable seat here. And once again, I invite you to close your eyes or soften your gaze. Create space in the body by lengthening your spine, reaching the crown of the head up towards the sky, feet firmly planted on the earth. Know that you live and breathe amid the miracle of life. But for it to touch your heart, you need to be present. We need to be mindful. Think of your breath as keeping you centered and anchored in this moment, in the here, in the now. Breathe in deep. Exhale long. Breathe in self-love, breathe out gratitude. And know that these precious moments of calm and stillness are born of your willingness to live the moment that you are in, this very sacred moment. And silently repeat these words to yourself. May I be happy. May I be well. May I be safe. May I be peaceful and at ease. Today, I celebrate me. I accept myself. I am stronger than my worries. I choose to take good care of myself. I will listen to my body and rest when needed. I will speak kindly to myself and others. I choose to be brave most of the time or some of the time, but will let others know if I need their support. That's a beautiful practice of self-love. Let others know when you need support pick up the phone, call someone. Again, repeat to yourself, may I be happy. May I be well. May I be safe. May I be peaceful and at ease. 
And I leave you with this sentiment. May you hold yourself with loving kindness for the beautiful, unique being that you are. And may all beings everywhere be happy and free. So from my heart to yours, from my home to yours, thank you so much and continue to take great care of yourself. Thank you, Jacqueline. <laughs> Before we end the formal video, I wanted to ask you if you were wanting to share a thing or three things that you love about yourself. Are you asking me? I'm asking oh, everyone. Okay, good. <laughs> you, <can share> too. <laughs> you can share too. <laughs> No, that was my question to everyone. <laughs> so in the chat, you can write something that you love about yourself. I got a message, Jacqueline, wonderful session. Thank you. Christy shares, I love that I am creative. I love that I can sing. I have a sense of humor. Emily's joining us from Greece. <laughs> wow. Welcome, Emily. Joseph says, I love that I'm a good man. Nice. I love that I practice yoga, that I can sing, and that I can cook. Mm -hmm. I love that I'm a good listener. I like I am great support for my husband. I love that I'm street smart and com uh, compassionate or companionate sense of humor and happy. I love that I can paint. I'm a great clarinet, clarinetist. I solve problems and I'm a good Nana. Mm -hmm. I love that I'm kind to others. I solve problems, beautiful. Well, thank you all so much. I love that I have a big smile. Great. Henry, I saw that smile. <laughs> I love that I have a positive outlook. I'm loyal. Perfect. Keep it going. But I'm going to ask you to write it now in your journal or the piece of paper that you wrote the prompts down. Jacqueline, thank you so much for your guidance today. I know that I feel a sense of relief. Um, really liked the hand on my eyes. So thank you so much for that practice today. And the heart around my energy field. So thank you so much for sharing that. And um, I will see all of you next, next Monday on August 15th. If you have any questions, you have my email and uh, we'll see you all soon again. Bye-bye.